This is tutorial 23 in this series in Blender Part 9. I went ahead and redid the second half of the tutorial because I found it very frustrating and annoying to work with the background image at an offset. So I decided to delete what I had done and uh, move the background image into place more accurately so that I don't have to move the objects that I'm working with back and forth. Um, I suggest you do that too. It's not worth moving the objects around to try to adapt them to the background image that was placed inaccurately. So I went back to Photoshop, nudged it over, and now we can keep going. Uh, another thing before I forget, these two vertices were not completely centered. And the way I centered them is I have this pivot set to the 3D cursor, and the 3D cursor is snapped to the actual object center. So I'm guaranteed that when I hit S for resize and X for scale along the X axis and zero to scale it here, you can see the number zero here. That's what I just typed in. I'm going to show it to you in a little more extreme fashion. Say I found a situation like this. Well, I can make them come together and make sure that the mirroring is gap free by going S, X, zero, and then confirming with the left mouse button. And bingo, there you go. This is a gapless, uh, object now and the next steps I want to take is I want to join these two with a line and how do I do that well quite simply whatever is selected I can hit F and it will draw a face or an edge to connect two vertices or whatever vertices you have selected that's really good to know we're gonna use this feature a lot so keep that tucked away in your brain but I'm gonna explain that edit again whenever I get to it so uh, they say the best way to learn is by repetition and you'll get plenty of that from me Okay, next I want to draw a similar line along this edge and this edge. I'm going to draw two lines because there is a bit of fuselage in between these two windows that I want to account for. So the way I do that, I can hit A for select all, and then I want to start using the knife tool. You activate the knife tool by pressing the K key, and then you have several different options. I'm going to get into all of those whenever we need them. Right now I'm going to need the knife exact tool, and I'm going to cut from here past this line but there's a cool feature about this knife and if I hit control the knife snaps to the nearest vertex that I'm hovering over so you can see and as long as I have control pressed it'll snap to any available vertex and what this helps me do is that it helps me prevent creating unnecessary vertices in my mesh but here I'm gonna have to create a necessary vertex just so that it's parallel to the background image so here I go I go past the line there and I hit a left mouse button to confirm and I hit return to actually make the cut and now if we join these two vertices with the F function we see that it's pretty accurately placed along the front windshield edge and I'm gonna do the same thing with the side windshield edge this time I'm gonna cut it from this vertex here down there and try to keep it as parallel as possible I have to select the line that I'm going to be crossing at the end. So if this is not selected, then the knife tool doesn't know where it wants me to cross. So that's why I'm selecting all. Now I hit the K button again to activate the knife tool. I hit control to snap it to that vertex. And then I let go of control so that I have the range of motion that I need in order to place the cut here properly. And I'm going to try to make it as parallel as possible. And so here we go. And I hit return. And now instead of simply making a face that joins these two together, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of making an entire face. If I select these four vertices and I hit the F key, then Blender creates a complete face for me. Note that we added a little bit of resolution by adding this, this thing here, and that gives us the opportunity to tweak the, uh, the roundness of the windshield a little bit. I'm going to push this one out just a tad, and there that'll help us maintain a smooth rounded windshield. Okay, so if I hit 3 now to switch to side view, we see that we have a simple line. Well, that's because it still doesn't have a Z dimension to it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select the parts that we're going to pull up to, make, to give it a Z dimension. I'm going to go into 3. And I'm going to pull this up with the G button until I hit approximately the top of the windshield, at which point I'm going to confirm it with the left mouse button. So I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to Shift S to snap the cursor to the selection. I'm still in the rotating mode that would consider the 3D cursor as the pivot point. Then I'm going to select all these, and I'm going to rotate them upwards a little bit, like this. And then I'm going to use the grab method to fine-tune these to align to the top of the edge. And notice I'm always uh, constraining these movements to the Z-axis, 
because I want it to not be messed up in top view, we're going to go ahead and fill these things, these rounded parts in a little bit later, so don't worry about those for now. And now I want to select the bottom row and make that one fit to the bottom part of the windscreen. So here we have that. We might have to add a little bit of resolution to get those curves 100%, but for now we're just going to uh, do it as close as we can, always constraining every movement to the z-axis so that we don't uh, mess up what we've done meticulously in the previous step on top view. And here, again, I would be able to rotate it. So I place the pivot in a location that makes sense, here maybe. And as long as we rotate it just a little bit, it's, it's okay. We're not going to be messing up too much of the top view. And with the position of this one down here, it's most important to maintain the same angle that we have here in the background with these two lines that we've created. So now that we've got this, we have to check it, how it's doing with front view. And at this point, I think I can deactivate layer 4 because this gives us enough cues already to know whether we're in front view, in side view, or in top view. And from top view now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select with the Alt or Option key. What that does is it allows me to select a loop, a complete loop. As soon as it splits off somewhere, as soon as there's a Y intersection, it considers only the one that closes the loop. Uh, the worthwhile one to follow. It's a bit of a hard concept to understand at first. If I right click on the line that would make up a loop and hit option while doing so, it'll select a complete loop. It's called loop select. And loop select is also a very crucial technique to keep in mind when you're thinking about stuff like topography. We're not going to get into that right now yet, but it is crucial to have clean topography on your model. And I would suggest you watch a video on topography. I think you can find one on blender.org. But it's very important to have clean topography because that translates directly into smoothness and also into efficiency in terms of uh, frame rate on, in the simulator and stuff like that. Okay, so what I want to do here is let me switch away from, I don't want the cursor to be the center point of my activities next. So I'm going to go back to median point. And what median point does is it puts the, the center of the pivot right in the middle of where the action is. Like it calculates the center of all these highlighted vertices and it will consider the median point as the axis of scale and rotation. Okay, now I'm going to extrude. Remember we used extrude to continue on the line down here. Well, extrude is a very flexible tool and it's kind of hard to get a hang of, but it's a very, very useful tool. And the sooner you figure out how to use extrusions, the better you'll be off. So right now in this mode, I can extrude and see how the extrusion works. It creates a copy of what we just made and it uh, draws walls around it. But I don't want to be moving it around. I want to be resizing it. So while I'm still in this fluid movable mode, I'm going to hit the resize key, S for resize, and suddenly now we have this type of an extrusion. You see how it automatically sort of created a bevel or an edge for me. And that is what I was hoping for. And this one looks actually really good. We can probably use it as is. So let me just position it properly and confirm it. And then I'll do the same thing with this side here. Extrude and uh, resize. And then I'll put it into position here. We might have to do some tweaking with it, but I would say this is not bad. We have the beginnings of this windshield. Now you notice this faceted look here, right? These, these facets that you see. And I can eliminate those facets optically simply by going down here and saying, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this to you. If you want to move this button thing around, you can hit the middle mouse button to pan uh, these menus around. So again, if I want to create a non-faceted smooth look to all of this, all I do is I hit the set smooth key. And now the problem is we've got some faces pointing inwards and some faces pointing outwards because of the technique we use to model this. Now that's not alarming at all. That's nothing to be worried about. It will happen all the time. So let's tab into edit mode to fix that. We select all the vertices and then we hit control N and it will ask us if we want to recalculate the normals outside. And I will say yes because that's exactly what I wanted to do. It's interesting how smooth view brings out these uh, things where you don't have all the normals lined up towards the same direction. But it's fine, you can easily fix that. And now we've got ourselves a nice windshield frame 
which we can actually use to model the rest of the plane around, which I'm going to hopefully get into in the next couple of tutorials.